the spinal column. Known around the world to be the center of health. Not only does it house very important cranial nerves, but we often disregard the fact that it's not just the lollipop stick that holds the preciousness at the top. It is part of the brain. But ancient traditions, as far back as civilization goes, have always venerated the spine as being the origin of where our spiritual ascension comes from. On top of this, there are very arcane secrets that are encrypted into allegories, mythology, and even the Bible. Watch out, this information might just blow your mind in a good way. Smash that like button, comment below, subscribe to the channel, share the video out far and wide, and get ready for this microdose of infinity. Welcome back to Waking Infinity News. I'm your host, Ben Joseph Stewart. I've been talking a lot lately about world news, bringing it into my own personal philosophy, a lot with the Tao, a lot with I am loving awareness, in an attempt to find a way to show that this external circus, as we would call it, the projected external world that we seem to share is malleable. And it is malleable when we do our own inner work and when we understand how to concentrate. I don't want to go too deeply into that part specifically because it actually has to do with the Kogi, Mamus, in northern Colombia that spend the first 9, 10 years of their lives in complete darkness to attune to Aluna, the Great Mother. They learn how to concentrate and to listen to nature as their only form of thinking. So their form of thinking is listening. Now, I have lately been applying this to all of my exercises that lately have really revolved around the spinal column. So we are going to focus on the spinal column today and the importance of why we should listen to it. But I really want to bring you into why should we even care? The spine just for some people seems very innocuous. It just seems like that stick that holds up the rest of our body from our legs to our head. But how crucial is this very well venerated stick inside of our body. Let's dive deep. The spine is the first thing that forms inside the womb. Judith Harris, the author of Jung and Yoga, The Psyche Body Connection, says that spinal problems like back pain, postural asymmetries, and even injuries encrypt themselves into the body and psyche somehow. Harris sees low back pain as symptomatic of our unconscious disconnection to our spine and backbone and everything that it represents. According to her, this has left us unstable, without roots, to where we have come from, to the moment, and to where we are headed in the future. When we stand in proper alignment, the force of gravity passes down through the center of the head to the back of the knees and ankles making the sacrum at the bottom of our spine, connecting it to the hips, the literal center of gravity in the body. And according to Harris, this makes the sacrum the focal point of our relationship to the ground, to Mother Earth, the body, and to our relationship to human reality. So that's the bottom of our spine, connecting to the ground. What about to the heavens? We're like a tree, right? We have our roots deep into the ground. So the sacrum at the bottom of our spine is our center of gravity for the earth. But at the top of our spine, it's not just the skull. There's actually this atlas bone. And the atlas bone was brought to my attention many years back when I was giving a talk in Manchester, England. A woman came up to me and said, we do this practice to set the atlas bone. And setting the atlas bone is important for people who have had a cesarean section, a C-section, where the mother was cut open and the baby did not have to go through the birth canal. Very important things happen when you go through the birth canal. You come out right next to the anus, you're inoculated with that flora, and that is actually part of the child's immune system growing up later in life. Yes, this can have effects way later in life. So the C-section, not only do you miss that part of it, but... When the head is coming out of the birth canal and that child is guided out, that process actually sets the atlas bone on top of the spine for the skull. This allows for proper posture. And we know, if you've been watching my past few episodes, you'll know that just a tiny little problem 
and a postural asymmetry can have over time a lot of effects. It can ripple out through the body and have some kind of radiating pain in a completely different part of the body or just start causing organs to shut down and a loss of oxygen capacity in the lungs. This goes all the way to hormones in the body being completely out of whack. And I'll get into this from the neck and the spine placement. So the atlas bone is really important. On top of this, we also see that the spine is represented in many ancient allegories. And one of the specific ones that you'll see is actually called the caduceus of Hermes. Now the caduceus is a staff with two intertwining serpents all the way up to the top, and then at the top, wings sprout. Now, the center line right there is what would be called the Sushumna in Hindi. Basically, in the Hindu tradition, the Sushumna is that center line. And there is a masculine, feminine, almost electrical, negative, and positive polarity that winds its way up the spine. They are polar to one another, but they are also twins of one another. They need one another. One is masculine, one is feminine, Ida and Pingala. So the Ida and the Pingala grow up the spine, which would be represented the center column by the Sushumna. And all three of these are the forces that rise up the spine. And in somebody who is having a transcendent experience or they are working with what is called kundalini energy, I know these are all very spiritual terms, but there is probably a very real bioelectric signature inside the body that shows this. We just haven't had the science to actually care to put the money in to take a look at what's actually happening in the subtle levels of the spine. So as these serpents go up to the top, they sprout into wings that beat the air. Air in the elements is the mind. Air is the mind element. There is also another staff that you will see a serpent raised on, and this would be the staff of Aaron in the Bible. So you have the serpents in the desert that are crawling on their bellies in the dust, biting the Israelites. They are killing the Israelites, but the Lord commands Moses to take this staff and raise one of these serpents up on that staff. The serpent twines itself all the way up to the top, and then that staff with the serpent erect, not crawling in the dirt, right, going horizontal, but vertical up the staff, that same serpent that was once killing the Israelites is now healing the Israelites. Think of this allegory. The energy that is just dispersed and out onto the ground, the animalistic energy crawling with its belly in the dust, that specifically is the creative sexual energy inside of us that is not being used correctly. It's just constantly being dumped and dispelled. It's in its lower form. But when it raises up the spine through something called seed retention, which I'll get into in the deeper dive, it raises itself, that force, up the spine to the brain stem where the pineal and pituitary gland sit. And this activates a dormant aspect of the mind, the air element. And this is also medicine. This is what I believe all the ancient traditions with this symbol were really looking for. Now let's go deeper into this symbolism. You see one of these two very symbols on ambulances as a symbol for the medical industry. I'm not going to get into the institution of the medical industry right now and why they have taken this symbol, but it runs deep and some say there is a massive conspiracy around this. Santos Bonacci, one of my favorite researchers. If you type his name into YouTube and then type in sacred secret at the end, you will get a bunch of his work that shows that the Bible was actually speaking about inner processes. Much of the Bible actually speaks about the way the body works and the process of transcendence if we work with the body correctly. Now, he shows this thing called the sacred secret, and he's talking about where a seed is born. This seed travels all the way down the spinal column, and then it is resurrected all the way up the spinal column, and it is crucified on the 33rd vertebrae. 
being the atlas bone. Now that 33rd vertebrae, if you think about it, Christ was crucified at age 33. There are 33 degrees in Freemasonry. There are 33 vertebrae in the spinal column. All of this allegory melds together and you'll come to understand that most, if not all, secret societies, long-standing secret societies, were not just interested in different kinds of external alchemy and external magic that does things only in the external world. Real magic and alchemy come by inner processes of will and changing diet, changing oxygen intake, water intake, thought intake, focus and concentration that causes for a chemical reaction inside the body mixed with movements and postures of the human body. And this has a transcendent experience, not only on the mind, but for consciousness in general. So Santos Bonacci talks about the sacred secretion. So the secretion or the sacred secret is this thing, this seed, that germinates inside the body. But if it is not expelled through ejaculation, then it rises back up and it actually is taken all the way up into what is called the cave of Brahma inside the brain. These would be the ventricles where the cerebrospinal fluid and DMT is produced. This is also in Taoism called the crystal palace. Now in your pineal gland, you actually have little crystals in there. Joe Dispenza talks about this a lot. Wim Hof talks about taking the cerebrospinal fluid after a bunch of breaths, which potentially produces more DMT. Just watch DMT Quest, the documentary. And it takes all of this, and when you do the hold, after all the breathing, you squeeze the sexual organs, which actually causes for the cerebrospinal fluid to make its way all the way up the spinal column to the top of the staff, if you will, for those wings to sprout. Now you'll come to understand why the Pope carries around a staff with a pine cone at the top, symbolizing the pineal gland, why wizards hold staffs and usually has something at the top. Not all the time, but has some kind of symbol at the top. This represents the spinal column and also represents that entire complex, the pituitary and the pineal complex that sit at the top of the spine. So when this seed goes from the sacrum, sacral area, and it is brought back up, it is not expelled out of the body, brought back up through the magnetic centers, which are called the chakras in the body. Samael Anvior has a lot of good work on this, where he says, Do, Re, Mi, Fa, So, La, Ti, and then above is the eighth octave, right? It's the starting of the do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, do. So this will also show you why in Freemasonry you have that symbol inside that diamond, the Freemasonic symbol, you have a G. G is not only the letter for God, the letter for geometry, but it is also the seventh note in a scale, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, back to A. So when you raise this seed all the way back through the spinal column and it goes to that third eye center, that is where that magnetic center is, when you look at most mythology, when you look at most spiritual traditions, they speak about these magnetic centers in the spinal column or around the right in front of the spinal column and these are also portals so i've talked about wormholes before these are portals and we draw from other aspects of reality and they are brought into our reality through our spinal column and all of its magnetic centers so without going too much on to a tangent with pure thoughts meaning not uh, griping about things, complaining about people, self-talk that's sabotaging of our own potential. When we allow for this seed to rise back up, and there are specific times of the month when we get in tune with our own cycles, that this seed for men and women is risen back up through the spinal column, goes back into that pineal and pituitary complex, and when done correctly, potentially with darkness, potentially, but not necessarily with certain psychoactive or psychedelic herbs and plants and a proper diet, then what will happen is what 
pretty much all the mystics have been talking about. A complete transformation of the neurochemistry, of the hormonal chemistry, and of the ability for the mind to open itself up, for the brain to communicate with itself in different ways. And mind you, the brain is not just up here. You go down the spinal column, the very same cranial nerves connect to all of our organ systems down here. They think as well. They process emotion. They process information. They have neurons. The gut and the heart has neurons, and they send information back up to this part that we call the brain. So this whole thing is a complex connected by the myofascial system. And I'll get into the myofascial system in another episode. So Santos Bonacci had some great information about bringing the seed back up to this complex with meditation, with proper diet, in the proper times of the month, and with bioplasma uh, salts. There are 12 salts that supposedly correlate to the 12 zodiac signs, and you, whatever zodiac sign you are, need a specific salt. So you take these cell salts, you take them, if you take too much of it, you'll just piss it out anyway, but you take it every single day and you're making up for a salt that you are potentially deficient in. Now, going deeper, when you are retaining your seed, when you are abstaining from the orgasm, this does not mean you are not engaging in what we would call sexual intercourse. What's happening though is you are avoiding ejaculating the sperm. For the woman, you're avoiding dispersing the essence. Because when they ejaculate, typically it's held inside the body and it's reabsorbed, but the energy is dissipated. So for men and women, it's slightly different, but the principle is still the same. When done with no seed, these exercises can lead to anxiety. Also, when the seed is retained, even more anxiety can be caused if it's not done under strict guidance. And I'm not just saying from the outside from some kind of guide. I'm saying guidance from within with enough knowledge and research to understand the processes that are going to happen. I personally have gone through this and had, I would say, the biggest meltdown of my life at the end of nine days. And I was doing an entire protocol of seed retention, of meditation, of working with the sexual energy and not releasing it and having strong intentions and meditating and focus my concentration on the intention mixed with the gift of this seed. And I had a meltdown. It was at the end of the day, when I look back on it, it was very important for me to have this experience. But at the time, I thought I was going crazy. So with this, Gurdjieff said, um, this is called the Kunda buffer. You're not raising Kundalini if you're doing it with greed. If you're doing it outside the bounds of safety and purity, then you are actually enlivening not the coiled serpent of Kundalini, which is the intelligence of the Great Mother. It's the intelligence of God rising through our spine. And we're holding that charge like a light bulb, trying to hold far more wattage and amplitude. When we do this, a lot's going to be changing inside of us. And if we don't know how to maintain it and navigate the intensity without sending ourselves into a rage, then what could happen is we could enliven this thing called the Kunda buffer through greed and impurity. It is not the Kundalini, it's the, the reverse polarity of it, where it is egotistically driven. It wants its own um, satisfaction, satiation. It wants its own gratification. And in that, the Kunda buffer can take over. And I believe, I truly do believe, if you go back and you look at people, um, the, uh, the guy who wrote, I think it was Stephen Covey, who wrote the um, seven highly effective habits of successful people. He talks about sexual retention of the energy and sexual transformation is what he calls it. Uh, transmutation would be the actual terminology for it. With this, I believe high functioning business people enliven the Kunda buffer. And it is some non uh, purely three dimensional entity or intelligence that is disembodied, but it uses bodies. It uses people who don't have the guidance, but they've activated themselves in some ways, and then they can see their own. 
they recognize and acknowledge their own. This is the extreme importance that we need to look at when we are working with the sexual energy specifically. Now, if you go over to benjosephstewart.com, you become a member, you will get access to the deeper dives. And in the deeper dive associated with this episode, I'm gonna go deeper into seed retention and the sexual energy. This whole thing about the spine is a two-part series. So the very next episode, I'm gonna go deeper into some research of Cullen Smith that I really like. I love his work with the symbols of power. But to stay on point, in the deeper dive section, I really wanna show that there are some very serious things you need to keep in mind when working with sexual energy, but it is extremely powerful. So it's almost like the genie. You only want to work with it if you know you have clarity. And then you know whether you're confused, whether it's cloudy, or you actually have clarity on what is your path. Not what you want out of life. Very distinct difference, but your path. We need to understand our path and where we know we're meant to be going with all of our energy, all of our focus and attention. And when we are connected with that and we do this exercise, it's like rubbing the gene. You want to be aware of what you're wishing for, but it will take you there on a rocket. So that's about all I can give you for today. I want to thank you guys so much. Again, go over to benjosephstewart.com, become a member. That's how you get access to all of the deeper dive stuff that you will not find here on YouTube. Check out the Discord link below. Get involved with the Discord chat. Um, I've been a little absent on there because I'm about to go on a huge road trip. I'm making all these episodes before I leave, but leave your comments, get involved in the Discord chat, and we're going to start basically bringing this arcanum, this understanding of the sacred secrets out for the world to see. Discord chat, an entire group, people who work with these things nonstop. Let's get this conversation going, and I'll catch you guys next time on Waking Infinity News.